uh, welcome welcome to the online lecture series of professor s k paul university department of english bra bihar university muzaffarpur dear viewers and students you are welcome to my class today i am going to deliver my lecture on metaphysical poetry and poets metaphysical poet any of the poets in the 17th century england who inclined to the personal and intellectual complexity and concentration that is displayed in the poetry of john dun the chief of the metaphysicals others include henry vaughan andrew marvel john cleveland and abraham cowley as well as to a lesser extent george herbert and richard crusher their work is a blend of emotion and intellectual ingenuity characterized by conceit or wit that is by the sometimes a violent yoking together of apparently unconnected ideas and things so that the reader is startled out of his complacency and forced to think through the argument of the poem metaphysical poetry is less concerned a with expressing feeling than with analyzing it with the poet exploring the recesses of his consciousness the boldness of the literary devices used especially uh, obliquity irony and paradox are often reinforced by a dramatic uh, directness of language and by rhythms derived from that of living speech <clears throat> esteem for metaphysical poetry never stood higher than in the 1930s and 40s largely because of t s eliot's in influential essay the metaphysical poets uh, published in 1921 a review of herbert j c grierson's anthology of metaphysical lyrics and poems of the 17th century in this essay eliot are good that the works of these men embody a fusion of thought and feeling that later poets uh, were <coughs> unable to achieve because <coughs> sorry <coughs> because of a dissociation of uh, sensibility which resulted in works that were either intellectual or emotional but not both at once in their own time however the epithet uh, metaphysical was used uh, uh, pejoratively in 19 in 1630 the scottish time however the epithet metaphysical was used um, in 19, in 1630 the scottish poet uh, william drummond of uh, hawthorn hawthornden objected to those of his contemporaries who attempted uh, to abstract poetry to metaphysical ideas and scholastic and a scholastic uh, uh, quiddities at the end of the century john dryden censored them uh, for affecting the metaphysics and for uh, perplexing the minds uh, of uh, uh, of the fair sex uh, with uh, nice uh, speculations of philosophy when uh, he should engage their hearts with the softness of love Samuel Johnson in referring to the learning that their poetry displays also dubbed them the metaphysical poets and the term has continued in uh, in use ever since 
Eliot's adoption of the level as a term of praise is arguably a better guide to his personal aspirations about his own poetry than to metaphysical poets themselves. His use of metaphysical underestimates these poets debt to lyrical and socially engaged verse. Nonetheless, the term is useful for identifying the often intellectual character of their writing. The term metaphysical poets was coined by the critic Samuel Johnson to describe a loose group of 17th century English poets whose work was characterized by the inventive use of conceits and by a greater emphasis on the spoken rather than lyrical quality of their verse. These poets were not formally affiliated and uh, few were uh, highly regarded until 20th century. Attention established their importance. Given the lack of coherence as a movement and the diversity of style among poets, it has been suggested that calling them Baroque poets after their era might be more useful uh, once the metaphysical style was established. However, it was occasionally adopted by other and especially younger poets to fit appropriate circumstances. So, origin of the name metaphysical, where is the origin? In the chapter on Abraham Cowley, in his Lives of the Most Eminent English Poets, 1779 to 81, Samuel Johnson refers to the beginning of the 17th century in which, uh, in which uh, there appeared a race of writers that may be termed the metaphysical poets. This does not necessarily imply that he in, intended metaphysical to be used in its true sense in that he was probably referring uh, to a witticism of John Dunn who said of uh, John Dryden who said of John Dunn he affects he here means uh, John Dunn he affects the metaphysics not only in his satires but in his amorous verses where nature only should reign and perplexes the minds of their fair sex with nice speculations of philosophy when he should engage their hearts and entertain them with the softness of love. In this, Mr. Cowley has copied him to a fault. Probably the only writer before Dryden to speak of the new style of poetry was Truman of uh, Hawthornden, who in an undated letter from the uh, 1630s made the charge that some men of late transformers of everything consulted upon her information and endeavored to abstract her to metaphysical ideas and scholastical quiddities, quiddities uh, denuding her of her own habits and those ornaments with which she hath amused the world some thousand years. <laughs> the Augustans Johnson's assessment of metaphysical poetry was not at, not at all a flattering. The metaphysical poets were men of learning and to show their learning was their whole endeavor, but unluckily resolving to show it in rhyme. Instead of writing poetry, the only wrote verses and very often such verses as stood the trial of the finger better than of the ear, for the modulation was so imperfect that they were only found to be verses by continuing the syllabus. The most heterogeneous ideas are yoked by violence together 
nature and art are ransacked for illustrations, comparisons and allusions. Their learning instructs and their subtlety surprises. But the reader commonly thinks his improvement dearly bought and though he sometimes admires, is seldom pleased. Johnson was repeating the disapproval of earlier critics who upheld the rival canons of Augustan poetry. For though Johnson may have given the metaphysical school the name by which it is now known, he was far far from being the first to condemn 17th century poetic usage of conceit and wordplay. John Dryden had already satirized the Baroque taste for them in his uh, uh, Mac Fleckno and Joseph and Joseph Edison in quoting him single out of the poetry of George Herbert as uh, providing a flag a flagrant example twentieth century recognition of metaphysical poets. <clears throat> During the course of the nineteen twenties, T. S. Eliot did much to establish the importance of the metaphysical school, both through his critical writing and by applying their method in his own work. By 1961, uh, Alvarez was commenting that it may perhaps be a little late in the day to, to be writing about uh, the metaphysicals. The great vogue for Dunn passed with the passing of the Anglo-American experimental movement in modern poetry. A further two decades later, a hostile view was expressed that uh, emphasis on their importance had, had been at attempt by Eliot and his followers to impose a high Anglican and royalist uh, literary history on 17th century poetry. But Colin Burroughs' dissenting opinion in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography is that the term metaphysical poets is still retains some value. For one thing, Dunn's poetry had considerable influence on subsequent poets uh, who emul emulated his style. And there are several instances in which 17th century poets use the word metaphysical in their work, meaning that Samuel Johnson's description has some foundation in the uses of the previous century. Um, however, the term does isolate the English poets from those who shared similar stylistic traits in Europe and America. Since the 1960s, therefore, it has been argued that gathering all of these under the heading of uh, Baroque poets uh, would be more helpfully inclusive. There is no scholarly consensus regarding uh, which English poets or poems uh, fit within the metaphysical genre. In his uh, initial use of the term, Johnson quoted just three poets, Abraham Cowley, John Dunn, and John Cleveland. Colin Burrow later singled out John Dunn, George Herbert, Henry Vaughan, Andrew Marvel and Richard Crusher as central figures uh, while naming, naming uh, many more, all of part of whose work has been identified as uh, sharing its uh, characteristics.
two key anthologists in particular were responsible for identifying a common stylistic traits among 17th century poets, Herbert Grierson's metaphysical lyrics and poems of the 17th century which was published in 1921 was important in defining the metaphysical canon. In addition, Helen Gardner's metaphysical poets published in 1957 included proto-metaphysical writers such as William Shakespeare and Sir Walter Raleigh and extending into the restoration brought in Edmund Waller and Rochester. While comprehensive, her selection as Borrow remarks so dilutes the style as to make it virtually co-extensive co uh, with the 17th century poetry. Late additions to the metaphysical canon have included sacred poets of both England and America who had been virtually unknown uh, for centuries. John Norris was better known as Platonist uh, philosopher. Thomas uh, Treherne's poetry remained unpublished until the start of the 20th century. The work of uh, Edward Taylor, who is now counted as the outstanding English language poet of uh, North America, was only discovered in 1937. Johnson's definition of the metaphysical poets was that of a style critic looking back at the style of the previous century. In 1958, Alvarez proposed an alternative approach in a series of lectures eventually published as the School of Dunn. This was to look at the practice and self-definition of the circle of friends about Dunn, who were the recipients of many of his verse letters. They were a group of some 15 young professionals with an interest in poetry, many of them poets uh, uh, themselves, although like Dunn for much of his life, few of them published their work. Instead, copies were circulated uh, in manuscript among them. Uncertain ascriptions resulted in some poems from their fraternity being ascribed to John uh, to uh, Dunn by later editors. A younger second generation was a close-knit group of courtiers, some of them with family of uh, professional ties to Dunn's circle, who initially borrowed Dunn's manner to cultivate uh, wit. Among them were Lord Herbert of Cherbury, Cherbury and his brother George, whose mother uh, Magdalen was another recipient of uh, verse letters by Dunn. Eventually, George Herbert, Henry Vaughan, and Richard Crusher, uh, all of them knew each other, each other, took up the religious life and extended uh, their formerly secular approach into this uh, new era. A later generation of metaphysical poets writing during the Commonwealth became increasingly more formulistic and lacking in vitality. This included Cleveland and his imitators as well as much transitional figures as Cowley and Marvel. What all had in common, according to Alvarez, was esteem not for metaphysics but for intelligence. Johnson remarked that to write on their plan it was at, at least necessary to uh, read and think. Only echoed its recognition a century and a half before uh, before in the many tributes paid to Dunn on this death, uh, Dunn on his death. For example, 
Jasper Mainz comment that for the fellow readers of his work we are thought wits we are thought wits when it is understood coupled with it went a vigorous sense of the speaking voice it begins with the rough versification of the satires written by dunn and others in his circle such as a uh, uh, f a uh, everard uh, uh, gilpin and john row later it modulates into the thoughtful religious poems of the next generation with their exclamatory or conversational openings and their sense of the mind playing over the subject and examining in from all sides helen gardner too had noted the dramatic quality of this poetry as a personal address of argument and persuasion whether talking to a physical lover to god to christ's mother mary or to a congregation of believers elegists a different approach to defining the community of readers is to survey who speaks of whom and in what manner in their poetry on the death of dun it is natural that his friend edward herbert should write him an elegy full of high flown and exaggerated metaphysical logic in a similar way abraham kaule marks the deaths of crusha and of another member of dun's uh, dun's uh, uh, literary circle henry von henry sorry henry walton uh, here however though kaule acknowledges crusha uh, briefly as a writer poet and saint his governing focus is on how crusher's uh, goodness transcended in his change of religion the elegy the elegy is as much an exercise exercise in a special application of logic as was edward herbert's on dun henry wotton on the other hand is not remembered as a writer at all but instead for his public career the conjunction of his learning and role as ambassador uh, becomes the becomes the extended metaphor on which the poem's tributes turns 12 elegies upon the author uh, accompanied uh, the posthumous uh, first uh, collected edition of dunn's work poems by j d uh, with elegies of the author's death published in 1633 and were reprinted in subsequent editions over the course of the next two centuries uh, though the poem were often cast in a suitably metaphysical style half were written by fellow clergymen a few of whom are remembered for their poetry among those who are were henry king and jasper main who was soon to quit authorship for clerical orders bishop richard uh, corbett's poetry writing was also nearly over by now and he contributed only a humorous squib other churchmen included henry valentine uh, edward hyde and richard busby to poets lucius carey second viscount uh, uh, falkland and thomas carey who were joined in the uh, 1635 edition by sydney godolphin and links with the heterodox great uh, uh, two circle they also served as uh, uh, courtiers as did another contributor um, indimion porter in addition carew had been in the uh, 
in the service of Edward Herbert. Isaac Welton's uh, link with dance uh, circle was more uh, tangential. He had friends uh, uh, with the great two circle, but at the time of his elegy was working as a researcher for Henry Wotton, who intended writing a life of the poet. This project uh, Welton inherited after his death publishing it under his own name in 1640. It was followed by a life of Wharton himself that prefaced the collection of Wharton's uh, works in 1651. A life of George Herbert followed them in 1670. The, link, uh, the links between dense elegists uh, were thus of a different order from those between Dunn and his circle of friends, often no more than professional acquaintanceship. And once the poetic style had been launched, often no more than professional acquaintanceship. And once the poetic style had been launched, its tone and approach remained available as a model for later writers who might not necessarily commit themselves to only to it. What is, what are the characteristics of modern metaphysical poetry? Grierson attempted to characterize the main traits of uh, metaphysical poetry in the introduction to his anthology. For him, it begins with uh, a break with the formerly artificial style of their antecedents to one free from poetic diction uh, or conventions. Uh, Johnson acknowledged as much in pointing out that their style was not to be achieved by descriptions copied from descriptions, <clears throat> by imitations borrowed from imitations, by traditional imagery and hereditary smiles. There is European Baroque influences, including use of conceits on metaphysical poetry. Another characteristic, uh, characteristic singled out by Grierson is the Baroque European dimension of the poetry. It's a fantastic conceits and hyperboles, which was the fashion throughout Europe. Again, Johnson had been partly before him describing the style as borrowed from Marino and his followers. It was from the use of conceits, particularly that the writing of these European counterparts was known. Conceptismo uh, in Italian, conceptismo in Spanish, in fact, Croshaw, had made several translations from Marino. Grierson noted in addition that the slightly older poet Robert Southwell, also, who is included in Gardner's anthology as a precursor, had learned from the antithetical, conceited style of Italian poetry and new Spanish as well. The European dimension of the Catholic poets, Crusher and Southwell, has been commented on by others in the opinion of one critic of the, uh, of the 1960s defining the extent of Baroque style in 17th century English poetry may even be said to have taken the place of the earlier discussion of the metaphysical. Southwell counts as a notable pioneer of the style in part because his formative years were spent outside England and the circumstance that Crossaw's later life was also spent outside England contributed to making him in the eyes of Mario Prez, the greatest exponent of the Baroque style in any languages.
Crusher is frequently cited by Harold Siegel uh, when typifying the characteristics of the Baroque poem, but he goes on to compare the work of several other metaphysical poets uh, uh, to their counterparts uh, in both the Western and Eastern Europe. The use of conceits was common not only across the continent but also elsewhere in England among the cavalier poets including such elegists of Dunn as Carew and Godolphin. As an example of the rhetorical way in which various forms of repetition uh, accumulate in creating a tension, uh, only relieved by their resolution at the end of the poem. Siegel instances the English work of Henry King as well as uh, Ernst Christoph Homburg's in German and uh, Jan uh, Andrzej's uh, Morgistins in Polish, in addition, marvels to his coy mistress is given a famous example of the use of uh, hyperbole common to many other metaphysical poets and typical of the Baroque style too. There is intelligent uh, wordplay and wit in metaphysical poetry. This is one of the characteristics. The way George Herbert and other English poets uh, torture one poor word uh, 10,000 ways in Dryden's phrase finds its uh, counterpart in a poem like uh, uh, Constant, uh, Constantism uh, Hugens' uh, uh, Son Doug Sunday with its uh, verbal variations on the word sun. Word play on this scale was not confined to metaphysical poets, uh, moreover, but can be found in the multiple meanings of uh, will that occur in Shakespeare's sonnet number 135, and of sense in John Davies uh, that the soul is more than a perfection or reflection of the, uh, of the saints. Such rhetorical devices are common in Baroque writing and frequently used by poets not generally identified with the metaphysical style. Another striking example occurs in Baroque poems celebrating black beauty, built on the opposition between the norm of feminine beauty and instances that challenges at that common place. There are examples in sonnets by Philip Sidney where the key contrast is between black and bright by Shakespeare, contrasting black and various meanings of fair and by Edward Herbert where black, dark and night contrast with light, bright and spark. Uh, black hair and eyes are the subject in the English examples, while generally it is the color of the skin with which romance poets deal in much the same paradoxical style. Examples uh, include uh, Edward Herbert's uh, uh, La Gialetta and Galenti or the sunburned exotic beauty and Marino's La Belle uh, Chef. Uh, the beautiful slave is still more dramatically uh, Louis de uh, Gongora's uh, in, in, uh, in La Fiesta del uh, Santismo uh, Sacramento at the Feast of the Blessed uh, uh, Sacrament introduces a Creole dialogue between two black women concerning the, uh, the, the nature of their beauty. Much of, uh, he, uh, much of this display of uh, wit uh, hinges upon enduring literary conventions and is only distinguished uh, as belonging, belonging to this or that school by the mode of treatment. But English writing 
uh, goes further by employing ideas and images derived from contemporary scientific or geographical discoveries to examine religious and moral questions often with an element of uh, of uh, <coughs> casuistry uh, bringing greater depth and more thoughtful quality to their poetry as such features <coughs> Such features distinguish the work of the metaphysical poets from the more playful and decorative use of the Baroque style among their contemporaries. Platonic influence on metaphysical poetry. Ideas of platonic love had earlier played their part in the love poetry of others often to be ridiculed there, although Edward, Edward and Abraham Cowley uh, took the theme of platonic love more seriously, more seriously in their poems with uh, that title. In the poetry of Henry Vaughan, as in that of another of the late discoveries, Thomas Traherne, neoplatonic concepts played an important part and contributed to some striking poems dealing with the soul's remembrance of perfect beauty in the eternal realm and its uh, spiritual influence. Stylistic Echoes in Metaphysical Poetry Long before it was so named, the metaphysical poetic approach was an available model for other outside the interlinking networks of 17th century writers, especially young men who had, who had yet to settle for a particular voice. The poems written by John Milton uh, while still at university are a case in point and include some that were among his earliest published work well before their inclusion in the poems of 1645. He is on the morning of Christ's, Christ's uh, Nativity, published in 1629, and on Shakespeare, 1630, appeared in Grierson's anthology, the latter poem and on the university career 1631 appear in, in Gardner's too. It may be remembered also that at the time Milton composed this, the slightly younger John Cleveland was a fellow, was a fellow student at Christ's uh, uh, College, Cambridge, on whom the influence of the metaphysical style was more lasting. In Milton's case, there is an understandable difference in the way he matched his style to his subjects. For the Nativity Ode and commendatory poem on Shakespeare, he deployed Baroque concepts while his two poems on, on, on the career, Thomas Hobson, were a succession of uh, high-spirited paradoxes, what was then uh, titled an epitaph on admirable dramatic uh, poet William Shakespeare, was included anonymously uh, among the poems uh, uh, prefacing the second folio publication of Shakespeare's plays in 1632. The poems on Thomas Hobson were anthologized in collections titled A Banquet of Jests, 1640, and Wit Restored, 1685, bracketing both the 1645 and 1673 poetry collections published during Milton's lifetime. The start of John Dryden's uh, writing career coincided with the period when Cleveland uh, 
uh, Cleveland, Cowley and Marvel were first uh, breaking into publication. He had yet to enter university when he contributed a poem on the death of Henry Lord Hastings uh, to the many other tributes published in um, Lachrymi uh, Museum, 1649. It is typified by astronomical imagery, paradox, baroque hy hyperbole, play with uh, learned vocabulary and universal meta uh, psychosis, an irregular versification which includes a frequent uh, in Jambent. Uh, the poem has been cited as uh, manifesting the extremes of the metaphysical style, but in this it sits well uh, with others uh, that uh, uh, they are that are like it. John Denham's uh, elegy on the death of uh, Henry Lord Hastings, for example, or Marvel's rather smooth upon the death of, uh, uh, of the Lord Hastings. The several correspondences among the poems uh, there are sometimes explained as the result of the books making a covert uh, royalist uh, statement. In the political circumstances following the recent beheading of the king, it was wise to dissemble grief for him while mourning another under the obscure and closely and closely wrought arguments arguments typical of the metaphysical style. The choice of a style by the young Milton and the young Dryden can therefore be explained in part as con as contextual both uh, went on to develop the uh, develop radically different ways of writing neither could be counted as potentially uh, metaphysical poets nor could alexander pope yet his early poetry evidences an interest in his metaphysical forebears among his juvenilia appear imitations uh, imitations of Cowley. As a young man, he began work on adapting Dunn's uh, second satire, to which he had added the fourth satire to be 1735. Pope also wrote his elegy to the memory of an unfortunate lady, published in 1717, uh, while still young, introducing into it uh, a string of metaphysical conceits in the lines the beginning. Most souls, it is true, but peep out once an age, which, it, which, in, which in part echo a passage from Dan's uh, second anniversary. By the time Pope wrote this, the work for the metaphysical style was over and a new orthodoxy had taken its place of which the rewriting of Dunn's uh, satires was one expression. Nevertheless, Johnson's uh, dismissal of the school was still in the, in the future and that and at this uh, start of 18th century allusions uh, to their work uh, struck uh, an, an answering chord in readers. The best examples of metaphysical poetry in English literature. I am going to give you some of the best, most uh, illustrative examples of uh, metaphysical poetry uh, from its golden age. Poems which highlight the concepts, extended metaphors, wordplay and paradoxes which may which uh, many poets associated with the level metaphysical impressed and utilized in their work. The first quote is from John is of John Donne from his poem The Flea. The text of the poem Mark but this flea and mark in this 
how little that which thou denyest me is it sucked me first and now sucks thee and in this flee our two bloods mingled be thou knowest that this cannot be said a sin nor shame nor loss of a maiden head yet this enjoys before it woo and pamper swells with one blood made of two and this alas is more than we would do like many of the best metaphysical poems the flea uses an interesting and unusual conceit to make an argument in this case about the nature of physical love like andrew marvels to his coy mistress the flea is essentially a seduction lyric since this flea has sucked blood from both me and you the poet says to his a uh, would be mistress our blood has already been mingled in the flea's body so why shouldn't we mingle our bodies and their fluids in sexual intercourse of course this rather crude paraphrase is a world away from the elegance and metaphorical originality of dun dun's poem with its extended metaphor john dunn's another poem the sun rising the text i am going to recite busy old fool and ruly sun why dost thou thus through windows and through curtains call on us must to thy motions lover seasons run saucy pedantic wretch go cheat go chide go tell good handsome go tell good huntsman that the king will ride call country ants to harvest offices love all alike no season knows nor climb nor hours days months which are the racks of time this is one of dunn's most celebrated poems and it's gloriously frank it begins with dunn chastising the sun for peeping through the curtains rousing him and his lover as they lie in bed together of a morning its metaphysical quality is evident in dunn's planetary imagine imaginary later in the poem especially when he taunts the sun for being unlucky in love because its natural partner the world is already spoken for because dun and his beloved are the world now i have selected the third poem from george herbert the caller george herbert's poem the caller i struck the board and cried no more i will abroad what shall i ever sigh and pine my lines are life are free free as the road loose as the wind as large as a stone george herbert born in 1593 and died in 1633 went to the grave without seeing any of his poetry into print it was only because his friend nicolas ferrar thought they were worth salvaging that they were pub- published at all in this poem herbert's speaker seeks to reject belief in god to cast off his collar and be free the collar refers specifically to the 
dog collar that denotes a Christian priest with its connotations of ownership and restricted freedom, though it also suggests being uh, bound or restricted more generally. Herbert, we should add, was a priest himself. This central collar metaphor signals this as one of Herbert's uh, greatest achievements in metaphysical poetry. My fourth poem, the fourth, the next poem, the fourth one, George Herbert's The Pulley. Uh, it is also in, uh, entitled as Gifts of God. When God at first made man having a glass of blessings standing by, let us, said he, pour on, pour on him, pour on him all we can. Let us, said he, pour on him all we can. Let the world's riches, which dispersed lie, contract into a span. So strength, so strength, first made a way, then beauty flowed, then wisdom, honor, pleasure. When almost all was out, God made a stay, perceiving that alone of all his treasure, rest in bottom lay. Another of Herbert's poems whose paradoxes and wordplay show him to be one of the greatest metaphysical poets. The Pulley is a creation poem which imagines God making man and bestowing all available attributes upon him except for rest. Work is important so that man should worship and and worship the God who made nature rather than nature itself. We suppose one way of looking at it is to say that God is advocating a hard work as its own reward and justifying having just one day of the week as a day of rest on which to worship him. Man should be rich and weary rich not only in financial but in moral and spiritual sense too, we assume. Now, next poem is Henry Poems, The Retreat. Happy those early days when I shined in my angel in fancy, before I understood this place appointed for my second race, or taught my soul to fancy aught but a white celestial thought when yet I had not walked above a mile or two from my first love and looking back at that short space could see a glimpse of his bright face. The Welsh-born Vaughan, he was born uh, in 1621 and died in 19, 1695. So Vaughan is less famous than some of the other names on the list of metaphysical poets, but his work has similarly been labeled metaphysical. This poem is about the loss of heavenly innocence experienced during childhood and a desire to regain this lost state of angel in fancy, playing upon the double meaning of retreat as both refuge and withdrawal. Uh, now, sixth poem is uh, Andrew Marvell's The Definition of Love. My love is of a birth as rare as it is for object strange and high, it was begotten by despair upon impossibility. Magnanimous despair, magnanimous despair alone could show me so divine a thing, where feeble hope could never have flown, but vainly flapped in, flapped its tinsel wing. Uh, 
if uh, we, we are going to try to pin down the term metaphysical poetry to a clear example we could do uh, we could do a uh, worse than this poem from Andrew Marvel, who was born in 1621 and died in 1678. In the definition of love, Marvel announces that his love was born of despair, despair of uh, knowing that the one he loved would never be his, because he and his beloved run on parallel lines, which means they can never intersect and come together. In other words, those who are best suited to each other if we interpret the parallel image thus are often kept apart. This poem has been interpreted as a coded reference to homosexuality. Two men who love each other are parallel in being the same gender but 17th century society decreed that they could never be together. A, a clever poem, but also a powerful one about frustrated love. Seventh, Andrew Marvell's, my next illustration is from Andrew Marvell's poem to his coy mistress. Had, had we but world enough and time, this coyness lady were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to, uh, to walk and pass our long love's day. Thou by the Indian Ganges side shouldst uh, rubies find, I by the tide of humber and would complain, I would love you ten years before the flood. Love you ten years before the flood. Marvel addressing his sweetheart says that the woman's reluctance to have sex with him would be fine if life wasn't so short <coughs> but such a plan is a fantasy because in reality our time on earth's uh, earth is short marvel says that in light of what he is just said the only sensible thing to do is to enjoy themselves and go to bed together. Why they still can, the poem is famous for its enigmatic reference to the poet's vegetable love, which has perhaps inevitably been interpreted as a sexual innuendo and gives us a nice example of the metaphysical poets love metaphysical poets love of unusual metaphors so dear viewers and listeners i have this way i have completed my two days lecture it's the second volume of my of my uh, lecture series and i will send you more of my lectures ahead. Thank you. All the best. Enjoy.